Obviously, you laid out a quite interesting expansion plan out there. Thank you. My first question to you is, what, what gives you so much confidence, just given the macro weakness we've seen in the economy? Well, when we look back at what, what we have learned in China since 1987, um, it took us 16 years to build 1,000 stores, but then, uh, you know, our pace of acceleration uh, picked up in the actually last decade a lot, and right now we're at 13,600 uh, stores. Um, and while the Chinese economy, the growth rate actually slowed down from double digit, not, uh, and then you know now it's about mixed single digit. What really gave us the opportunity to grow very aggressive is the scale, the absolute scale of the economy, economy right now is 17 trillion um, uh, for China economy, and it's about roughly 18% of the global GDP. So even right now with 5% of GDP growth, the absolute incremental growth of the size of the economy is about 900 billion. Uh, to put things into perspective, it's about uh, roughly uh, two eggs of the entire Vietnam GDP. So, so mm. the, the absolute scale of the market uh, give us that opportunity. And you know, that's the point one. Point two is, uh, if we look at our middle class um, customers in China, roughly, uh, they're about 450 million. And KFC is a very accessible brand. Um, so, yeah. and, and so is Pizza Hut. And our membership right now is a, at about 445 million, which roughly the size of China middle class. Um, so if we take the glass half empty, half full approach, what does that mean for us? It's, there's still roughly a billion of customers in China who either yeah. don't have convenience access to our store or our price point is still beyond their reach or for other reasons. So if we look at almost one billion customers that we can still serve, it would make sense to, to see that why we can pick up the, yeah. the pace of development uh, much faster. And internally, of course, right now, our, our average cost of investment for each store is uh, a bit lower, so yeah. we can make it work. So I, I hope that gives you the perspective why there's still yes. such opportunity for consumer sector in China. You certainly have. And you know, we, I talked about it just now. I mean, it, it's restaurants, it's catering. I mean, the, these are still really bright spots in the economy here right now, if you look at the data. What do you think are the key drivers of this? And do you think this kind of resilient, you know, surge or demand that we're seeing when it comes to catering and that sector can actually sustain? Um, then we are talking about the consumer side. I mean, there are a few trends of consumer consumption behavior here. One is consumers are uh, definitely uh, getting more rational with their consumption choice. Uh, so the point of value for money is important. It's not only the price, it's also the quality uh, of the experience of the, or, or the product uh, that, 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 that work for the consumers. Mm. And, uh, and of course, in, 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 in China context right now, I mean, after the last three years pandemic, um, you know, this trend has become even more important. So that's point one. Point two is consumers yeah. are focusing more on experience, sort of experiential consumption and, and food and dining is certainly one of them. The other one is uh, tourism. The local tourism yeah. is doing quite well in China. And then third is there's a lot of interest in exploring the lower tier city or interesting cities in China. Uh, you know, so so you know the the that the extra interest to go to lower tier lower tier city give us more opportunities to open store yeah. in lower tier city as well because we are doing uh, quite quite well in, both in top tier city and lower tier cities.